Hi, I'm Leah Griffith from leahgriffith.com and feltpaperscissors.com, which is our craft shop. In this Handcraft Your Life episode, I'm going to show you from start to finish how to make this gorgeous crepe paper leaf. This is a maple leaf and I'm using it to decorate my fall table. This episode includes the SVG and the PDF free for all of you. And remember that you can get all the materials and tools that I use in this video in our shop at feltpaperscissors.com. Before we get started, one more step. Subscribe below so that you're the first to know about our weekly episodes. So let's get to it. For this leaf, I am using the heavy crepe paper in Merlot. And of course, you can use any color that you prefer. You'll also need glue, and I'm using the Art Glitter Glue. I have some little mini clips, and this is handy if you're hand cutting your leaves. Wire cutters, my scissors, and then I have four pieces of this 24 gauge wire, and I'm using white, although you can also use green. I'm going to show you how to add some color, and this is also optional. I'll be using two Posca markers, which is red and orange, and Posca markers sit on the surface of your paper, so they lighten it rather than darken it, and this is important. I'm also using a pan pastel, and this one is permanent red, and for that I need this little paintbrush. For this project, we are providing a free template, and you can also get this as an SVG if you're using a cutting machine. Note that on the PDF version, I do have a graph of exactly how your leaves will be laid out. One of the most important things that I always tell people when working with crepe paper and our templates is watch the grain line. It's very important that you follow the grain line on the pattern to get the best results. The first thing we're going to do is cut out our leaf pieces. Here is our heavy crepe paper, and this has a 250% stretch. For this leaf, I really like to pre-stretch the crepe paper. It gives a bit more of a lightweight touch to the leaf. Similar to what's real in nature, when these leaves dry and fall to the ground, they become very thin and crisp. You can make one leaf from a 10 inch by 12 inch piece of paper. And since I know this will stretch 250%, I'm going to cut it at six inches. And just follow the grain line. If you're going to use the stretch method, this is actually really fun. And I'm stretching it as much as I possibly can. There'll still be a bit of crepe left even though you're stretching it. You can see I have a nice piece here in the middle. This is a little less stretched on the edges, so I'll just avoid those edges. I find that the easiest way to hand cut with templates is to pre-cut the template. Once you get really good at working with templates, you can just cut around them. But I always suggest that at least one side is pre-cut. And this is where you really want to watch this grain line. You'll place your piece of template right onto the paper to match the grain. But before I do anything else, I'm going to cut a strip to match the width of this leaf. It's always easier to work with smaller pieces of paper. I'm placing the leaf exactly matching the grain line. Then I can cut the long straight line that's at an angle. This is really long, so it's a bit cumbersome. Make sure this line is nice and clean. Then I'll flip this piece of crepe paper around and match the two edges. And this is where the clips come in handy. I'll go ahead and clip the edge of my template onto the edge of the crepe. Again, making sure that the grain lines match the grain line of the paper. And this is much easier to handle as I cut out the details of the sleeve. You can use larger scissors if you want to. However, I love these detail scissors. They're so sharp and I can really get into all those angles. I've designed the template to be a very large maple leaf. Of course, you can always downsize it and make it smaller. I've cut out all of my leaf pieces and you can see there's five different sections of the leaf and each section comes down to a point. You can always refer to the printable PDF template for the graph on how to lay them out. I'll start with the center leaf, which is the largest, and I'm going to sandwich this wire right between the two layers of crepe paper. When adding wire to leaves, I always find it best if I bring my wire down about a half inch from the tip. My favorite way to add glue to wire is to slide it into the glue, and I'm taking my metal tip off of my glitter glue, and this is a perfect place to slide the wire. 
which is exactly the right size to slide the wire. Now, I can't go in all the way, but I can at least add glue to most of the wire for this leaf. I'm gently placing it right on the edge. You'll want to lay it down as close as possible to the edge. I'll add some extra glue to the tip and a little bit more down here where I wasn't able to slide it into the glue bottle. Then carefully overlap the leaf. This glue will dry clear, so it's okay if some of your glue peeks out from the edges. I always find that leaves look the most refined when there's less overlap and less paper. And also, use your finger to press it down. You really want those edges flat. One side done. I'll flip it over and press down the other side. And then I'll set that aside ready to dry. And I'll repeat this with the rest of my leaf pieces. A tip that I like to use to get those overlaps really narrow is to actually pick it up before it's completely pressed down and hold it up to the light. And you can kind of pull it off, move it around a bit, and then just really manipulate both sides of the paper so that you have a beautiful overlap. For the two smallest pieces of the leaf, I only need half of the wire. So I'll go ahead and clip that in half and then wire the leaf pieces. Out of all of the pieces of the leaves I've done so far, I have to say that this one is the perfect overlay. I'm pressing the wire and the paper between my fingers. Or you can lay it on the table and press it down this way. All five pieces are glued and now we're going to attach them I think the easiest way to start that is bending the wires right at the base of the leaf and you can line it up right there at the edge. And I've put the metal tip back onto my glitter glue. Remove the pin. You always want to keep the pin in because this glue dries fast and I'm putting a thin bead of glue right on the edge, overlapping it with the second piece and once I have it somewhat in place, I'll hold it up to the light, make sure it doesn't have too much of an overlap. That looks good. Press it down and I'll do the other side. Your leaf will be a little bit floppy when it's drying, so make sure that you hold the center when you pick it up. And at this point, I'm going to go and make sure all my joints have a nice, perfect point. Something that I noticed when I made a few of these is I don't always match up really well at the center. Sometimes it's a bit trickier. So a great way to solve that is take a piece of your pre-stretched cray paper. I'm just gonna cut a small strip and I'm gonna cut a nice little arch like this. Make sure it's stretched out as best as possible. Add some glue to the tip and then just overlap right at the base to cover any joining parts so that your wire is completely covered. And you can do that on both sides. I don't want my stems quite that long, so I'll use my wire cutters and clip them off. And for this leaf, these wires, the stem of the leaf is about two inches. Now I'll take my pre-stretched crepe paper, fold it, and I'm going to cut about a quarter of an inch strip off of the end and make sure when you do this that you're cutting it against the grain so that the grain goes sideways. And this is going to make a nice strip of crepe to wrap the leaf stem. I'll start by adding some glue to the top. Press the end of my crepe paper into place. And this is pre-stretched crepe paper. Then I'll wrap it around the stem stretching it even more as I move down the stem. Now I can add the glue all the way down to the tip of the wire. And as I'm wrapping, I am stretching, trying to make it as smooth and clean as possible. I come to the end without clipping the wire, clip off the ends, add just a touch more glue to seal off that tip. So here is your finished maple leaf. You can leaf it like this, or you can add some extra detail and color, and I'll show you how. The pen pastel and Posca markers are what I found worked best to color this leaf, but you might have some other materials in your studio, and I would suggest that you try first on a scrap piece of crepe paper before you add it to the leaf. In practicing how much color and detail that I wanted on these leaves, you can see on this side of the leaf, I have a bit more color, and after I finished it, I thought, mm, that might be too much, so, 
On the other side of the leaf, you can see where I refined my technique just a little bit more. So I'm going to start with my red Posca marker. If you've never used Posca markers before, they are paint markers and you have to press the tip down multiple times to get the ink to come forward. And I've already done that. So the first thing I'll do is run my marker right along the wire. And if your crepe paper has been pressed down nice and tight, this should be very easy to do because the wire is actually above any of the crepe paper. And I'll do this from the base all the way to the tip of the leaf. And I'm moving some of this color down the stem just a bit. Now I'm going to add a few lines going from the center out to the tip. And I think it's really important that you do follow the grain line of the crepe paper. In a real leaf, they arch just a bit. They do have more shape, but it doesn't look good if you try to cross the grain of the crepe paper. So what I'm going to do is just kind of make some lines starting from the center. And I'm kind of making them a bit random. They're not lined up exactly, you know, side by side. And I'll go to the tip and actually make a line coming back in. So each one of these little detail tips has its own little line. And you can do this as much or as little as you prefer. I'm not doing any lines where the two leaves attach. And this is very subtle, but you can see how this adds some detail. Next, I'll go in with some pan pastel. And these two colors are almost exactly the same. Add a bit to my brush. And I'm just going to brush out some color from the base, kind of moving towards the tip of the leaves. And this adds a bit of a gradient to the leaf. I like coloring a bit of my stem. And I'm going to go back in, and this is the orange Posca marker, and add just a bit more highlight on top. And I'm starting with the stem, and then every once in a while I'll just add a bit of the highlight. What I'm wanting to create is this look where the brightness of the leaf comes from the stem and moves out to the tips of the leaves. So I'm really keeping this yellow to the lower half of the leaf. And there we go, and there's my finished maple leaf. If you want to, you can bend the arms of the leaf a bit, or you can keep it completely flat. That's the one thing I really love about having these leaves wired. And now this is ready to decorate my Thanksgiving table. Be sure and like this video, and if you enjoy this type of project, making crepe paper flowers or leaves, you're invited to come on over to leahgriffith.com and enroll in our full beginner's guide to crepe paper flower masterclass. And we'll see you next time.